HTTV with Ernest and Gregory, here with Chairman Dean Hoyle on the eve of Huddersfield Town's first ever Premier League game. Dean, thank you for joining us. No problem. First of all. Like I said, we're about now, probably around 24 hours away from, from that kickoff at Crystal oh. Palace, just a little bit over. Long time to wait. Sat here right now, what's your overriding feeling? Um, tomorrow, another game, to be fair, David. Um, like David in his press conference yesterday, it's another game. Uh, eight, it's a long way to go, um, hard to get to. But no, tomorrow's another game. Um, I'm sure we'll be uh, uh, more enlightened after the game, but for me, um, I really can't wait until Newcastle at home. To me, to see the guys run out, TV audience, um, hundreds of millions all over the world. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what I'm really looking forward to see the, uh, the Terriers um, in the blue and white run out um, at the, uh, the John Smiths on the week on Sunday will be a magical experience. The fans who are there at the John Smith next weekend will, will recognise changes within the John Smith Stadium ball to the facilities, yeah. to everything. Yeah. It's been a real summer of change in every area of the pitch. What's your view on what's been achieved here in a relatively short period of time? Um, I don't think many people um, really understood or realised the work what was to be involved. I know I know with you, David, we talked about over Christmas that Premier League with teams at the top of the Championship, they come and have a nosy. Um, but it wasn't until, um, I would say, the, um, uh, the massive Premier League officials turned up straight after the promotion to say, right, OK, guys, you've got the cash, crack on. Um, and quite rightly so. Then you actually understand the magnitude of the work. And to some people, they may not see lots of changes, because let's be fair, you know, cabling or floodlights, it's very similar. But the work involved behind the scenes um, and the staff have really had to a step up to the mark and uh, and achieve and uh, it's, it's coming together hopefully it will come in together just in time and we're saying about the stadium people might yeah. be able to hear off camera here there's drilling going on at ppg canal side as well there is there's a lot going on at this facility too but this is the time to do it isn't it we've, we've got the ability to do this and, and we're changing things for the better in the long term yeah look a hundred percent you know um you know the first step of premiership to me is really important where you can invest, um, but also what's in, important is a second and third term because then you can really, really invest. You, know, you look at Burnley, <coughs> pardon me, as an example, they've now spent £12 million on their infrastructure of training. You can't do that in the first season. You need some um, stability and continuity. So, yeah, there's lots of work to be done. The profile is higher. We have fans here. Um, you know, I've just been told there's a, a, a photographer trying to climb up the fence to take photographs. You're like, whoa, what a different world. But that's where we are. We're in now on the world stage. Um, uh, whether we like it or not, we're here um, and we're going to be scrutinising every department, but uh, we relish in everything. I think every Huddersfield Town fan really felt the emotions of the playoff final. I know you were no different. The world yeah. saw that as it yeah. was. Uh, how quickly did they have to give way to the kind of logic of planning for the future? Um, if I'm being really honest, um, I've been on holiday for probably four or five weeks, so I've, I've really enjoyed the emotion. I've let everybody else uh, get on with their work uh, and step up to the mark. Um, I've kept in touch by phone, um, but even coming back now, um, you know, the retail sales, I know, I know it's been well documented. We've had more sales before a ball is kicked than we sold the entire last season, including Wembley. Phenomenal. And this is everybody wants to be a part you know the stadium the stadium has been too big since 1994 now it's not big enough uh, uh, look we're embracing everything and it's really exciting that people now want to be a part of Huddersfield Town Football Club as you alluded to we all knew this was going to be a big change for the club but, but we being, didn't realize how much that's what I was going to ask being yeah. honest, even on the retail side obviously yeah. retail is your, your domain very much yeah. have you been surprised by just what a big step it is I've been, I've been surprised how small our shop uh, uh, seems to be now. Uh, no, look, you know, everything. Um, people just want to be part of that Premier League. You know, the shirts with the badge. It's just people, look, 3.2 billion people a year um, um, watch in 190 countries, every country in the world. Um, everybody wants to be a part of the biggest stage in the world. Premier League football and Huddersfield Town, we're there. And you know, people say little Huddersfield Town. Well, you know, we're as big as some clubs in there. Not the mall, as we know, but there's no reason why we can't um, um, uh, give it a real crack this season and see where it takes us. And that's what's exciting me. Do you think Huddersfield Town will ever be the same again ahead of that kick that Christopher Schindler put us into this league? No, because expectations are a lot higher. So um, even if we got relegated, people expect us to go straight back up. And that's why the emotion on, on, on the day of Wembley, I knew. I knew sat there that 
you know, when Forest Area missed the penalty, I think, right, okay, one more step closer, one more step closer. And we got there, extra time, penalties, Schindler, one penalty kick. It's, it's, people would say, look, if we haven't achieved Dean, we've done really well, proud, but we'll go again. I knew it wasn't going to happen. Look, you know, David Wagner, he'd have left. He'd have gone to another club. We know that because it is a served it, you know, bigger and better things. You know, look at our players. You know, you, you can name the squad Shinla, Kachunga, you know, they'd have gone on to bigger and better things. Um, and it'd been really, really hard to keep this squad together. And it came together so perfectly from the lone players to the recruitment to David to the to, to the, the identity to the fans, the connection. It was the perfect storm. And I knew for a football club like Huddersfield to achieve promotion with the financial means we had to do what we've done that is a once in a lifetime opportunity so when the penalty went in it was pure pure relief and actually really proud that um, as a Huddersfield fan you always dream I've been through Barry Rubri and all those dreams um, that it would happen but you never dare to dream it would and it has and it's just very overwhelming you talked about the impact that everyone wanted to be involved with Huddersfield Town. Yeah. It's well documented, you're a man who's, who's very proud of the town that he grew up in and the yeah. area and the yeah. football club he supports. How has it made you feel seeing Huddersfield react to having a Premier League team? Because for weeks after the playoff final, you saw the car flag still on people's cars. Even yeah. now, you go in there, everyone's got a new replica shirt on. Yes. The whole town is just provided real energy to Huddersfield, hasn't it? Do you know something? It has. And, and the football club we've done. In, in my opinion, we've done our bit. We've provided the stage, the platform. It's now up to businesses, council, leaders to actually ride the crest of the wave and embrace this. And I think they will. Um, but you look at the Huddersfield Town supporters. Look, in any in any walk of life, in any walk of sport, people want to be associated with success. The diehard fans have been here for years and years. Um, but we are going to attract um, the new fans. And David. We need the new fans. We need these people. You know, there's no point in saying, well, you know, they only come because we're doing well. Well, that's life. You know, um, the big clubs, you know, only got success in people through the gates on the back of success. And that's where we are now. So uh, long may it continue. That's the balance, isn't it? You say suddenly the stadium's too small for us, but you've got yeah. to balance off looking after those fans who've been here in the days under Barry and all those days that were, were hard probably as a fan. But you've got to balance that off with the new people and the new generation who are going to want to grow up supporting Huddersfield Town. Well, look, you know, all what I, um, you know, people, it's, it's well documented, but people say, well, what do you do, Dean? I look, I'm a custodian of fans' dreams. I think I'm sat here now, a very proud chairman, and I've delivered um, with the team and the club and everybody else, but we have delivered Premiership football. So I have delivered fans' dreams. And there must be young kids now growing up. Um, uh, five, ten, fifteen years old, thinking this Premier League is easy. I can assure you, from watching from watching this lot since 1979, what makes this really sweet is the dark days. Those really dark days of um, you can go to administration, you know, Exeter on a night, all the shorts, Stockport. Those dark days where you know Manchester City losing 10-1, tough days those. Um, and now you appreciate the good on the back of where we've been, so uh, yeah, fantastic. We talked a little bit about the effect on the town. There's been a lot of pieces written nationally about has, what yeah. this could do to Huddersfield. Yeah. As someone who, who ran a very successful business that started mm. in this area, do you think the businesses in the area and the town in general will feel the benefit of this? Would you be expecting to if, if, if you were starting Card Factory in the middle of Card Factory now? Um, I'm not sure, to be fair, uh, if I'm realistic. Um, yeah, there's going to be a bit of a, a, a an upsurge, you know, Huddersfield makes the finest cloth in the world. Uh, we know that, but not many people know that. So to me, it, it's our heritage, uh, we're a mill town. And let's be fair, you know, it's, it, 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 it's a proud, working, gritty mill town. And so is West Yorkshire. And, you know, times have been tough here. People go to, to work, they're earning lots of money. And now they're going to be seeing millionaires play every week on thousands of pounds. And I just hope we, we we can bring that closer together because um, um, it's going to be so exciting to see the world's best footballers on our patch and uh, yeah, 
can't wait. That was one of the things we did well last season. Under David. Yeah. That connection between the, the players and the fans, that, that has to continue. It's probably going to be more important now than it was last season. Well, we have to realise here, uh, the reason that happened is because David is an exceptional coach. He's not just an exceptional coach, technically recruiting, is also very good at understanding the environment he's coming into. So right before he took the job on to manage Huddersfield Town, he knew the town, he knew the identity, he knew the, he, he knew the fans, he knew the textiles, he knew, he understood. And I think part of being um, a, a really good coach and a manager is understanding the environment you work within. And I think David has done that perfectly. So I always say, you know, fans will say to me, oh, that, that's, that, that's so Tim Pot, you know, the, the wave at the end of the game. And, and I can assure you now, every club would love their coach and manager to do exactly the same, but it frustrates other people. So, uh, yeah, long may it continue <laughs> and hope we're doing as many this season. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We've made a real point as a club this summer of, yeah. of rewarding the players who have helped to get the club to where Absolutely, yeah. We've seen that yeah. very recently, Philip Billing, Michael Hayfler today. Too. Yes. Um, Equally, we could have a, a fairly new look team out at Palace tomorrow. We've had uh, quite a few faces through the doors. How much are you looking forward to actually seeing what that team's capable of? Um, well, I haven't seen them at all yet. I've, I've watched um, HDTV um, 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 from Austria. I'll get, I'll get one in for you there. Uh, fant fantastic commentary, David. <laughs> um, but no, no, seriously, um, I'm really looking forward to them. But um, I addressed the players yesterday. And David asked me to, to have a, a, a few words with them. Um, it was interesting. I think, look, all what I say to the players is now is, look guys, you know, this football club has provided a platform for you individually and collectively to go and prove you are premiership footballers and a premiership team. It's up to them now. And I always say everybody in life has an opportunity. Some take it, some don't. These guys have got to make sure they take it because this is the most wonderful opportunity. The football club, the town, and the players have, and um, let's embrace it, and let's do everything we can to uh, to drive on and be a successful Premier League club. That's the the big question, I suppose. Now, a big unknown. I think we all feel like we're much better off than we were last season in terms of strength of squad, yep. quality of player. Yeah. Is that good enough for the Premier League? I suppose none of us will know until we live it. We don't know. Um, you know, Patrick Stewart sent me an email this morning to say, you know, good luck. We're all he's in America, but wishing as well. And I just repeated to him, I sent an email back to say, yes, Patrick, as you have said on many times, um, on many occasions, um, we're going into the unknown. And that is exactly where we are. We don't know. We may be, we may be um, a, a relegation team. We may be a mid-table team. Who knows? I don't expect us to get relegated. I think we're, we're better. I firmly believe that. Um, you know, pundits have um, um, said we're going to go down. but. You know, if Pundit's got everything right, there would be a League One team now playing uh, playing Blackpool, wouldn't we, on the first game of the season or Bradford City. That's where we are and we prove people wrong because people don't understand um, what's right and what's wrong. Um, but we don't take any notice of that and I think this football club now has got to get used to many things. One, being scrutinised more. Uh, secondly, losing more games, Inev inevitable. Um, but um, the spirit, the identity, David, the players, the new players, um, great. And we've had to bring a lot of new players on, David. Absolutely. You know, if you think about it, our wage bill last season, well documented, £11 million. That is probably uh, £20 million behind Brighton mm -hmm. and maybe £50 million or £60 million behind Newcastle. We have had a long way to go to catch up to their starting point. That's where we are. What we have been good at, identifying the players and we've been straight in there. Yeah. As chairman, have yeah. the figures taken some getting used to? Because the whole financial landscape has just changed significantly as we've seen Huddersfield Town bringing players in for figures that we could have only really seen in the head in the news in the news I think for Huddersfield Town to spend 13 million on on, on Steve Mounier um, or seven and a half on Tom Innes etc or eight on Aaron Moy then you think to yourself that's really that's big money and it's big money for this club but we are where we are you know the Premier League in the first season they give you this huge check and what do you do? What do you do, David? Do you, do you think, right, okay, we'll bank it, we'll get relegated and we'll come back stronger. It's actually probably easier to try and stay there in the first place, um, but it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be a real challenge, but that's my view. Why, why invest the second time round? Let's try and invest now to stay where we are, because I believe you and me, after 45 years waiting, 
um, it doesn't come around very often. So let's try and stay there. Um, and we've got some great signings. And in today's market, they actually see relatively decent value. So uh, let's wait and see. Have you had time to properly reflect on just what we've done and where we've come? I mean, we, we, I remember the day you came into the office and introduced to us back in 2008 as chairman yeah. elect. We were in League One, no real signs of going anywhere in truth. And when yeah. you walked through that door, it's been a hell of a journey up until what's going to be on Saturday. It has, and it hasn't been, um, one would say, I think it was, was it last season was the only season in the eight or nine years I've been chairman that we've actually finished in a lower league position in the season before? Yeah. Last season. Yeah. Every season we've just notched up a little, little bit. And if you just, if, if you've got two minutes, I'm sure you have, um, we can talk through it. You know, my, my, my first um, uh, guy, uh, Lee Clark, um, a regret is with Lee, if we'd have um, um, won at Old Trafford, and um, in, in, in if we'd have beaten Peterborough United, would have had many, many more uh, of those players. Lee Peltier, um, we had some um, team then, Pilkington, Gary Roberts, a young Peter Clark, uh, Jordan Rhodes up there. We'd have had a fantastic team uh, to go into the championship. And I honestly believe we'd have pushed on. But as we know, failure, you've got to take a step back. Um, we got over the line. Simon Grayson came in. Uh, we just got over the line in penalties. Amazing. And then you talk about championship. I knew with Simon, he was a good manager, and I knew that he had a fantastic team. Simon Grayson, Dusty, um, and, and Miller. Great team, you know that. Yeah. Fantastic. We've seen that from what they've done. Of, of, of all the managers I've had, as a unit, brilliant. The way they blend, fantastic. But when you don't win for 15 games, and you are, you are hurtling towards the bottom, you have to do something. And I didn't see anything. But I, at the same time, when I sacked Simon, I knew he'd go on to be a good manager yeah. in a year. And I still text him now and talk to him. Um, and he'll do real well at Sunderland. And then Mark yeah. didn't work out. Wrong choice for me. Happens in football, doesn't it? Of course happens, it happens in yeah. football, yeah, you know. Um, but, but him leaving after the Bournemouth defeat did take everybody by surprise. Absolutely. It was a bolt out of the blue. Um, and then we got Chris in. Um, and Chris, look, he had a low budget. Um, uh, we probably played to avoid defeat more games. And it was an inspiring, a great guy, but it just wasn't for me. And I think that, that low point made me take the step of the left field, German, unknown. <laughs> What can we lose? You said this yesterday, worked. it was almost yeah. the, the low point that forced your hand in a way, or maybe it was. more persuaded to go down a different route. It was, it was. Um, but I always have a saying in business that, you know, if, if things just aren't going right and you try and fix them, you don't. If you throw the hand grenade in, it explodes, um, it'll either get better or worse, but it won't be the same. Mm. And that was the fact. I presume with David Wagner coming in, it was literally, you know, the hand grenade going in and poof, let's see what happens. And um, it really worked and you know lots of people have got to take credit you know Stuart Webber major influence in that um, so there's got to be people who take lots of credit but you know success has many friends and I think it wasn't just down to one person it was a combination of this football club and also the ability I kind of give people free reign to get on with it so uh, it came really well in the end and David you know I'm sure now in history his name will be written in history for forever you know um, and, 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 and so it should be as well. So we're sat here now, I can say, Dean Hoyle, Huddersfield Town, Premier League chairman. Yeah. And sat there, does that sound? Well, I never thought anybody would ever say that to me, <laughs> coming on the bus from Hepburn White past the old ICI works. <laughs> um, but we are where we are, you know, as a supporter, as a chairman, still can't believe it, you're still very surreal. Did someone all help with that when we sat there at Sellers Park and we're, you see us on match of the day in the evening, do you think that's when it really hits home? Um, it's got I, to at some point. Surely. Yeah, it does. Look, I, I even watch the TV now, and, and I probably never watched Sky Sports as much <laughs> as I have done. Um, um, but we're always on, yeah. you know, on the adverts, on the flags, we're there. And, um, you know, I think people like our story. Um, I think I'm probably one of the very few British owners in the Premiership. Um, so it'd be absolutely fantastic. And uh, has it sunk in? It really hasn't sunk in. Um, but immensely proud of um, everything and everybody. You know, it, th 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 this is a combined effort by everyone in this football club, and uh, 
Yeah, I think a week on Sunday against Newcastle. Um, can't wait.